So, you want to make one of these? Well, don't worry, you're on the right spot. Said something? Oh, no, it's just the intro for the new video that we're doing. Oh, cool, what is it about? It's about how we can make a replica of you. Huh? No, no way, you're not doing a replica of me. But it's what the people want, bro. I mean, there's no debating around it. We're doing another version of you. Mm-mm, no, you're, you're not doing that. Well, what do you suggest creating then? What character could possibly be somewhat like us, but not like us, Mr. I don't want another replica of myself? I think we both know the answer to that question. What do you mean we both know? Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. Today, I'm gonna teach you all how I stylize Jaden animations into a low poly character. And also, I'm going to show you guys how easy it is to make any character in this style of mine. So, we start off by opening Blender and putting our character reference. Ahem, a little warning. For this tutorial, Blender is key because I'm using some features that I don't see in other 3D softwares. So if you want to follow this tutorial, I recommend using Blender, which is free. All right. Back to the video. Before any progress can be done on the actual character, we need to have a base that we can work on, because even though it's a low poly model, we still have to follow the principles of anatomy. Although in my process, I do skip some parts. We start off by the head, by deleting the default cube, then adding another one, then giving this cube a subdivision modifier of one. Then we apply our modifier so that we get all of these new vertices. After that, you're going to start tweaking these vertices that you just got to give it more of a face shape instead of this low polysphere. For faster work, you can always turn on the symmetry on the top right corner depending on the axis your character is facing. So after you're happy with how your vertices looks and how your head looks in general, you can move on to the body which is as equally simple as the head. In object mode, you add another cube with a subdivision modifier of 1. Now you don't want to apply the modifier just yet. As I said, you want to follow anatomy for it to look good. So to make our lives a bit easier, we add loop cuts onto the cube so that we add extra topology onto the subdivision modifier. And depending on your character, it will have a different torso. In this case, for example, because we are doing Jaden and Jaden character is somewhat similar to mine, the torso will look like this mushed up jelly with a little curve happening on the back. But as I've said, this can vary it with the character that you're low polying. For example, take a look at this other model of low poly Ray from Evangelion that I did on stream. See how her torso seems more skinny and not that cartoony exaggerated? That's because she has her own anatomy and we don't want to break the overall silhouette of the character. So after setting up the torso for our character, we continue off by joining our two main pieces and start working on the fun stuff. For starters, notice how we have four faces on the bottom part of the head and four faces on the top of our torso? Well, we are going to use this to create the connection to both of these, which is the neck. Now, before connecting anything, you want to firstly inset the faces that are on the torso, then extrude them inwards so you have like a little pocket. Then inset the four faces that are on the head with edge railing enabled so it doesn't deform that much. Then finally, bridge these two areas together to create the neck. Of course, at first it may not look perfect, so you can always use proportional editing to tweak how it looks. After you're happy with how the neck looks, you move on to creating the arms. Firstly, select these four faces from both sides of the torso, then press E so you create new geometry by extruding them, but don't move them just yet. After extruding, you want to first press S on your keyboard so it's now going to be scaling that new geometry and then press X or Y depending on which way your character is facing so that it only scales on that axis alone. Once you're done scaling, you will notice that these kind of seem stretched out in a weird way. To fix this, go to the top of Blender and in this little tab, switch from medium point to individual origins. Then again. Whichever way your character is facing, you want to hit S to scale and X or Y to lock onto that axis alone, then hit 0 so that it's evenly flat on both sides. Now you do want to make these scales not that long, since these are actually going to be the arm sleeves of our character, not the actual arms. To make the actual arms, with our four faces selected from both sides, you want to right click and search for the loop tools feature, and select the circle one. As you can see, we do have to do some 
more work for it to be to proper size, but this will give us a nice round shape instead of this weird square one. Then inset those faces and pull them a little bit inside. After this you want to make sure you're on medium point to do the same steps we did for the sleeves which was extruding then scaling on the axis. So with that arms are now done and we move on to probably the easiest part of this model which are the legs and feet. If you made the same loop cuts as I did you most likely ended up with these 8 faces on the bottom of our character. What we're going to do first is insetting these faces and then pulling them inwards the model. Then we extrude these faces just a tiny bit. Then what we're going to do is divide these 8 faces into 2 sections which are going to be the 2 legs. So you start with any leg that you want. In my case I wanted to start with the right one of my character. And to make them the same size you can firstly flatten out the one you already made and by extruding the other one and flatten it out as well you want to turn on the snapping tool and set it to any of these 3 options. With your 4 faces of the other leg selected you want to press G to move then C to lock it onto the C axis then by simply hovering your mouse over the leg that has the right distance that you want it the other one will snap to the same exact height. For Jaden in particular she only has 2 more extrudes before the shoes. Now for the shoes it's not really a game changer. All you want to do is add another cube with a subdivision surface of 1 then play with the shape of it till you get this mouse shape cube. Apply the modifier and delete the bottom faces and to fill the faces you just deleted you alt click the edge rim and in the top left select face then grid fill. Now you have a good shoe that can go below your character. What about the other side? To make an exact replica of the shoe but to the other side, you can duplicate it by pressing shift D and then right clicking and find the option mirror on X global. If that doesn't work, try the other options. Then by just moving it onto the other side should do the trick. With this comes the hardest part of this video, like this is going to be super hard you guys, like you cannot, you cannot, you, you cannot imagine what is going to happen next the hands. Both sides of the arms, select it, extrude them, scale them, that, that's it, that's that's like literally it. But hey, the bed though, what about the hair? Can, how, can I, how do you do that? <laughs> Don't you guys worry, I have that covered as well. To understand how to do hair, we first have to look at something called the hairline. Let's take a look at Minecraft Steve as an example. What is that thing that separates the hair from the head if it's just a cube character? Well, this little line that goes all throughout the head is what makes the clear difference. With this in mind, we come back to Jaden animations and select those faces that make the difference between the head and the hair, which is the hairline. With those faces selected, you want to press Shift D to duplicate them, but don't move them just yet. You want to press P after that and select by selection. What this is going to do is basically separate the hairline from the base model. This is for easier workflow on the hair since having this while working on the hair isn't for, for everyone now is it? After this we want to shape a bit more of the hairline our character has and start looking on what makes our character's hair. For Jaden in particular I noticed these fluffs of hair that happen on the front and on the side of the hair. With that in mind, I start extruding, rotating, and scaling edges. It doesn't get more complicated than that. For example, for this big fluff that Jaden has on her forehead, what I do is extrude this edge, then play with the rotation and position of the vertices of the edge till I get the form that I wanted. If I need more edges, I can always add more loop cuts or extrude the edges even more. For the back of the head, because I don't have a reference for that, I went for this long hair that goes all the way down and just scale a little bit from the bottom part so it has some form instead of being completely flat. And after I'm done with setting the main fluids of the hair, this is what I'm left with. I know, I missed the one big floof Jaden has on her side. So to achieve that effect, firstly I added a solidify modifier to actually have more than just a silly piece of paper hanging on top of her head. Then I applied a modifier and I inset and extrude these faces that are on her side so I get this somewhat horn shaped thing. Then I scale it to get that big floof Jaden has on her hair. As a little extra, I extruded this part as well so it's just the same as the double floof she has. Jesus, how many times did I say floof? 
smooth. Before we finish up this part of modeling and enter texturing, make sure all of your faces are facing the right direction. If you ever encounter this weird problem when applying smooth shading to your model, it's more than likely that some faces are backwards. To fix this mistake, you can always enter edit mode and press A to select all of your faces, then by simply pressing shift N, all your faces are going to be facing the proper way. So blue means good and red means bad in some cases. And if by some reason some faces aren't turning, you can always go to the top where it says mesh, then go to normals, then flip, and that should fix it. So let's go, model finish, and we're like 10 minutes into the video. But don't worry you guys, now it's time to give it life with beautiful colors. Since I'm following the same style of shading of my model, we're going to be needing four main materials. T-shirt material, skin material, hair slash shoes material and pants material. This by all means is not video game model friendly since you want to use UV mapping for those kind of projects, but for these four material models it's totally fine to use procedural ones. So to have accurate cartoon shading on a 3D model, you firstly want to go to the shading tab and add a new material. Then we delete the principal shader and add these three components. A diffuse shader, a shader to RGB and a color ramp set to constant instead of linear. With the color ramp, you will start to set up the main colors and the shadows. The cool part about this is that you have total control of what the color of the shadows are. Take a look at how I didn't use total black for the shadows, but instead a desaturated purple for some of the parts. Now, these look good on their own, but if you want to go beyond that, you can add a transition between them. Right in the same materials node, you want to add a Polo Noir texture node, then by pressing Ctrl T, you want to switch this option to camera, then set it to 2D and randomness down to zero. Set the distance of that texture into the V value of a mix node. The A value must be set to 1. Then the result of that value should go to another mix node in the A value. Then in the V value, you're going to take the shader to RGB that you had earlier and set the result onto the color ramp. As you can see, you can play with the factor and scale to whichever style of shading you want it to be. With this, you have now created one color of your main character. So if you don't want to do this for every material your character has, you can select another part which will have different colors, set those faces to a new material, then in the materials tab on the side, you want to set it as the same you just created, then create a copy of that material. So now you have the same exact settings and the only thing that is left to tweak is the color ramp for the new colors. But, but, but what, do I do? what do I do? What about the face? Don't you worry. If you want to have a 2D face on your model, we do have to do a bit of UV unwrapping, but in a fun way, I assure you. Firstly, we have to select the edges that are around the neck, and with those edges selected, you want to go around the middle of the head, then mark all of these edges as seams. Now, select just the front faces that are inside of our edges, the ones that are going to work as our face, and unwrap them by pressing U and unwrap. To finally start doing our face textures, we want to set these faces a new material which is going to be the face, and put a new image texture with a resolution of 2048 by 2048. And set the color of the image texture as the same color as your character's skin tone, which in this case is white. Now in the texture paint tab above you, you can actually start painting our eyes and mouth inside of Blender. If you want to see in which faces are you actually painting, you can always turn on the wireframe on this little side panel, and also you can turn on symmetry on the properties of the brush so you work twice as fast. As well, you can change on how soft or how hard your brush is on the texture, and if you truly want Want straight eyes, in the brush settings on the one that is called stroke, change this option to line. Now when you draw your eyes, this line will appear instead, and you can make these lines perfectly straight by holding down the ALT key on your keyboard. I don't tend to use this much perfection on the face, since I still want it to look kind of derpy if you know what I mean. So after setting up your face, you might be wondering how can I add that cool shading technique that we did for the rest of the body. Well, it's as simple as adding a color mix note set to multiply, put both of our colors which are the texture and the color ramp, and the factor set to 1. And look at that, we now have our face with the shading technique. Now because you made it this far, I'm giving you a little easter egg to make your character really pop. 
an outline. You want to add a new material that has an emission shader and set to whatever color you want it to be. Make sure you turn on backface color and set it as the last material on this list. Then on the modifiers, add a solidify modifier to the entirety of your model, set the offset to 1, and the thickness is going to be how much your outline is going to actually pop. On the normal tab, click flip and high quality, and on the material tab, just scroll that number till you reach the material you just did. Boom! You now have an outline. Now, if for some reason you turn on face orientation and get freaked out because of everything being red, don't worry. This is just a solidify modifier that is doing all of the outline work. So as I mentioned, red can mean bad in some cases. So with modeling and shading done, it comes basic rigging of our low poly character. I call it basic rigging because this can be done in one minute or less. What you want to have for a basic character like this is three main bones on the middle, one big bone for the head, then on just one side of the bottom bone, extrude another one so it represents one side of the hip, and just go along to create the upper and bottom part of the leg as well as the foot. For the arms, you want to go to the bone that is right before the head bone and make three more which are going to be the shoulder, the arm, and the hand. Now before anything, make sure your model is facing with this red line across it which is the x-axis, as well apply all transforms to your armature and set the origin to geometry. Then enter edit mode and select all of the bones that are uneven. Press Ctrl F2 and make sure it's set to bones to rename all of the bones that are selected. Then set it to suffix and enter .l or .r depending on the side you made your bones, which in this case is .l because it's the left side of the character. After renaming your bones selected, you want to right click and hit symmetrize and this will give you a perfect replica on the other side of the skeleton. With your character and rig prepared, what you want to do is firstly select your character then your armature, press Ctrl P to prepare the parenting with automatic weights. And if you followed my steps this far, you should end up with something like this. A good enough rig that can give you plenty of freedom with the poses. So for my scene for example, I went for this nostalgia style if you would like to see it this way. You can see I set a simple animation set to constant instead of bezier so it looks more choppy. I also added fake shadows and fake glow that have a little scale animation. Also some stars just to fill up that space that was above Jaden animations. And you don't have to follow every single step that I did, if you want to give your character other features or even other hands, you are free to do that. Low poly is all about representing a character in the minimum amount of effort as possible. So when making stylized characters in low poly models, make sure to always try to get the essence that makes the character itself. For Jaden, it was her big floofs on her hair and her overall character being somewhat of a tiny version of herself. And I feel like I really accomplished that on this model. And I'm proud to say that this is something that I wouldn't add any more to it. I feel like I truly accomplished what I want with this piece. And if you followed some tips that I gave out on this tutorial or try to somewhat replicate what I did on this video and want some feedback from me, make sure to join the Discord server down below so I can see what's your progress. Don't worry, I won't bite. So thank you all so much for staying till the end of this video and if you guys want to see more of my animating and rendering process in another video, please let me know in the comments. And so, as a way to end this tutorial, what do you think of your model, Jaden? Nah, what were you expecting? Like like a guest appearance from her? No, she probably doesn't even know I exist. Or maybe she does. Maybe she's even watching this right now. Hi Jaden!